intelligent as completely nuts. Your commander in chief, the president of the United States. America sees itself as a no-nonsense place where solid values are instilled in the people by rational leaders. But what happens when the leaders turn to crazy ideas? I used to put out there in the Old West a wanted poster. It said, wanted, dead or alive. All I want, America wants him brought to justice. In the weeks after September the 11th, I started hearing rumors that the FBI were using psychics to predict future terrorist attacks, and that wasn't all. A former CIA man told me that the US Army used to secretly undertake thought death experiments, try and kill things just by staring at them. I said that seemed unlikely, and he said that's because I wrongly believe that our leaders are rational people. This whole area is, uh... It's just crazy, uh, and there's just much as much nuttiness within our CIA and the Defense Department as there is outside of it. Why is that? Because people are basically nutty. That means there's lots and lots of people out there in, our, in high places in our government who believe in these far-out things. Dr. Hyman came to meet us at the suitably surreal Las Vegas at the end of 2001. He said he didn't know much more because these things were highly covert, but he did give me some pointers. I found people all over the Defense Department and all over our, our, some of our other agencies be people who would learn to fast and go on a vegetarian diet, then a biotic diet, and then a, um, actually could fast for days without having to eat food at all. And they also would learn martial arts, but they also would learn to walk through walls and we're going to learn to pick up people's, other people's thoughts and stuff like that. And this was, this was serious business, you know. Some people were actually pushing this. I said I should try and find out what was going on, if these things are alive today in the war on terror. And he said, good luck. I don't know what's going on. It is an area where, you know, it, it's, it's a funny area, you know, and it's a mess, by the way. It's very hard. Frank Big suddenly became dictator of the United States. We, I, couldn't think, I couldn't track all this down. There's no way. You know, these agencies work by themselves, and there are people who work independent of the agencies they work in, you know, and you get all kinds of loose cannons running around there. It, it's, it's, it's just a mess. And so, for the past three years, ever since my meeting with Ray Hyman, I've been piecing together the secret history of these experiments and tracing their ongoing impact on George W. Bush's America. This film is about how it all began in the 1980s with General Stubblebine and the goats. You're reaching deep inside you Go! for things you've never known. It's been tough, rough going, but you haven't it is the summer of 1983. The US Army is still bruised from its defeat in Vietnam. Recruitment is at an all-time low. Hey, First Sergeant. Good morning. You can do it in the Army. Over at military intelligence headquarters, Major General Albert Stubblebine, who has 16,000 soldiers under his command, is secretly trying to walk through his office wall. You know, the electron, or the atom, is made up mostly of space. Okay, well, my space is made up of, of atoms. The wall space is made up of atoms. All you got to do is merge the spaces. But I didn't master it. John, I never got there. Didn't do it. Boom. <laughs> I just haven't figured out how my space fits through that space because I kept bumping my nose. General Stubblebine has never before spoken publicly about these things. 
He said he was confounded by his continual failure to walk through his wall. Maybe, he thought, he just had too much in his intray to give it the requisite level of concentration. I didn't, couldn't, wouldn't. No. Couldn't is the wrong word. I'd never got myself to the right state of mind. Okay. And if you really want to know, it's a disappointment. That's a disappointment. The general had no doubt that the ability to pass through walls would one day be a common tool in the US military arsenal. This might herald the dawning of a world without war, because who would want to mess with an army that could do that? The general, like many of his contemporaries, was still bruised by his memories of Vietnam. The general was sure that these powers were attainable, so the only question was, by whom? Who in the military was geared towards this kind of thing? And then the answer came to him. Special forces left! Your special forces left! Your left, your right, now pick up the step. Your left, your right, your left! Your left, your right, now pick up the step. Your left. If you think about the special forces, they are massively oriented on the ability of an individual first, okay, to do things that an ordinary man can't do. But I made, made trips down to Fort Bragg and tried to energize people. Back in Las Vegas, the CIA psychologist Ray Hyman said that the agency had asked him to evaluate General Stubblebine around the time of his trip to Fort Bragg. Lieutenant um, General Albert Stubblebine III, I think, or the second, I actually was, and this is somebody very high up in the, in the military. Well, he was the head of army intelligence. So we've got to have supermen. We got to, each, person, each, each of our operatives got to be at least as good as two or three people. He had people going spoon bending parties. And um, I once asked his successor, and I asked him um, if he had been forced to go to a spoon bending party. He says, oh, yes. I said, what happened? He said, well, the spoon's bent. He says, but he says, I couldn't see any military application of it, so I didn't think much of it. General Stubblebine told me that he decided to start soft with special forces because he didn't want to alarm them with his big ideas about walking through walls. So instead, he produced from his bag bent cutlery, and this is what he told them. If you take a look at that spoon, you can see that that's wrapped pretty tightly. It doesn't function as a spoon very much anymore. Look at this fork. I don't know whether you can see all of the, the twists and, and turns in that fork. But that's another example. And the key in all of this has nothing to do with bending metal. Has nothing to do with that, okay? What it has to do with, Lord mercy, if I can do that with my mind, what else can I do? But without much avail. It wasn't clear where they thought I was nuts. In any event, the, the reaction that I got was, we're not very interested. The general felt he had nothing to lose, so he suggested one last idea to special forces. He said they should maybe try and stare at animals and make their hearts explode. So what did you say to them? I said, wouldn't this be a neat idea? If you could teach somebody to do this. I mean, I wasn't going to try that on a human. Right. But I, I mean, mean but I you mean, were saying obviously you can do it an animal, you can do it with a human. Yeah. But special forces didn't seem too interested in that either. I left with my tail tucked behind my, you know, behind my legs <laughs> and walked away. Because I really thought it was a great idea. For the past 20 years, General Stubblebine has assumed that they considered his animal staring idea to be crazy. I assumed it too, but then I went to see a Special Forces sergeant called Glenn Wheaton. Ray Hyman had told me that Glenn was part of a secret early 80s paranormal military unit called Project Jedi. You've gone from the front door to the back door, but how many chairs in the house that you know? You know? You you probably can't tell me how many chairs in my house. 
Really, the super soldier would walk through your house and know how many chairs there were. Yes, he would know where all the lights were, would know where all the power outlets were. He would. That would be as a point of observation. Most people are are poor observers. They don't know. They don't. They haven't even got a clue about what's really happening around them. In Project Jedi, what was the layer above observation and that kind of stuff? Intuition. Is there some way we can develop you so that you make correct decisions? Like, you know, somebody runs up to you and says, hey, there's a, there's a fork in the road. Do we turn left or do we turn right? And you go, we go right. What were the other kind of extreme theories that, that were sort of mooted? Um, we had a master sergeant that could stop the heart of a goat. What, just by just looking by at it? Just by wanting the goat's heart to stop. And could he actually do it? Did the, did the goat's heart stop? He did it at least once. So, but not really an area that you want to go to. You know, unless you get, you know, not really an area that you really want to go to. Because uh, as it, I think as it turned out in the evaluation, he actually did some damage to himself as well. Huh. Sympathetic injury. Really? Yeah. So it wasn't as if the goat was psychically fighting... Back. The goat didn't have a chance. This happened down at Fort Bragg at what was called Goat Lab at the time. So had special forces stolen General Stubblebine's idea? Or was it a coincidence? Had they been staring at goats anyway and they just didn't want him interfering? And was the goat staring back post 9-11? I decided to try and find the answer to these questions. Bird's Eye introduce new steam fresh chicken meals. Steam from frozen in your microwave for more natural flavor, with nothing artificial added. New steam fresh meals from Bird's Eye. We don't play with your food. Knockout value on a Citroen Zara Picasso. Now available for just 9995. World Championship value from Citroen. The World Rally Champions for 2004. Offer guaranteed until the 30th of November. Orange don't like to be beaten on tariffs. So if you find a selected standard tariff on the high street that you really like from one of the other major networks, then we'll match it. The orange value promise. That really is another reason to be orange. around the clock. My bank Please try clocked later. off. My Indian is local. My bank, India. My barber, a person. My bank, a robot. We believe in another way. More people in branch. UK call centres only and phones answer 24-7. My patients, exhausted. My account, switched. The Callahan family must behave like aristocracy for six weeks to win £50,000. A lady, and he's the lord. Yeah, and you may be a lady, but you ain't no head of me. But what they don't know is, it's their own staff judging them. What the butler saw, Thursday at 10 on 4. I called Fort Bragg and asked if I could see Goat Lab, but they said they didn't know what I was talking about. 
but they let me film shots of the base and off camera a military public affairs man whispered to me that Goat Lab was just across the road from this building. Someone else told me that Goat Lab used to be called Dog Lab but nobody wanted to do all that to dogs so they switched to goats and that's all anyone would tell me. I felt I was getting close to a great army secret. Glenn says that the master sergeant who could stop the heart of a goat was called Michael Echanis. How did he get sick as a result of stopping the goat's heart? Um, to generate enough power, to generate enough uh, force of, of intent to damage the goat, he damaged himself. What, what part of him? His heart. Him? His heart was damaged. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, not really. Uh, Can you not do it because you don't want to, but do you have the power I'm, to stop a goat's heart? No, I don't think I have the power to stop a goat's heart. I kind of think that, that, that if one trained themselves to get to that level, then one would have to say, what did the goat ever do to me? You know, why that goat? I had many questions. Were they staring at goats again post 9-11? Could I find Michael Achanis? And how did this all begin? Who was the inspiration behind the wall walking and the goat staring? And so I asked around and the same name kept coming up. It's a name few people outside the military have ever heard, but it turns out that this one man started the whole thing. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Jim Channon. <laughs> what? Welcome to my home. <laughs> and you, if you want to pass through these gates, you have to be part mystic and prepared for everything that will surprise you and part visionary to imagine the very best that could happen to you and therefore create your best shopping list. <laughs> Why are you unlike my mental picture of a lieutenant colonel in the US military? Because you haven't seen many. <laughs> yeah, the only reason that, that you have a funny picture of us is because you've been watching too many movies made by people who don't know anything about it. Jim Channon's story begins during the Vietnam War. That's 30 days under combat conditions, and I had more like uh, 15 months. But this is real stuff. Um, it's the only one that, you know, in the end really counts if you want to have any credibility. Being in Vietnam eight years without a satisfactory conclusion left us as an army thinking that, you know, we've got to change some things here. I mean, in Vietnam, I felt like tire rubber, frankly. The politicians, like, waved me off. I had the right to leathers to the mothers and fathers of the soldiers who were killed in my unit. When I came home, I couldn't even watch my daughter be born in a hospital. Hello. Jim says that in Vietnam, the US Army was guileless and kind-hearted, and many of his men were killed because they impulsively fired high, missing their targets, and they just weren't the killing machines that the Army wanted them to be. I find that the kind of human being that is attracted to military service has a great deal of difficulty being cunning. It, we suffered in Vietnam so much from not being cunning. We just presented ourselves, you know, in our righteousness and got our butt shot off. When Jim returned from Vietnam, he asked the Pentagon if he could go on a fact-finding mission. He wanted the army to learn how to be more cunning. The Pentagon, bruised like Jim from Vietnam, agreed. Jim decided that the best place to learn cunning was from the emerging New Age movement of California. Jim's first stop was here at Esalen in Big Sur. Can you have some fun with this back? 
See if you can kind of have a conversation with this back. Tell it how you feel about it right now, how you're feeling right now, what's going on. Really let it come from you. See if you can express yourself in your back. And everywhere I went, I told them what I was